but having a strategy for video. See, another thing is people do too many videos because they don't have a plan. And you have to be very strategic about how you approach video. What are you saying? How are you saying it? Am I doing 10 videos or am I doing 100 videos? Fear stops us from achieving our true greatness. Are you a professional woman who is feeling stuck, unmotivated, or burned out? Are you worried about your wellness? Are you letting fear stop you from crushing your goals? If you answered yes to any or all of these, then this is the podcast for you. Dr. Charmaine Gregory, night shift emergency physician, burnout thriver, and wellness champion, along with everyday heroes just like you, will explore how to face fear in our lives and emerge victoriously. Hey, thanks for checking out this episode. Be sure to click the subscribe button and the notification bell so you get notified when the next video comes out. It only takes two seconds to make two clicks. So let's do it. Let's get back to the video. Hello, Fearless Freedom Tribe. This is Dr. G and we are back for another episode of the Fearless Freedom with Dr. G podcast. And this week, We have Susan Glover, and she's going to talk to you about who she is and what she is up to. Well, hello, Charmaine. How do I pronounce your name? Is it Charmaine? Yes, it is. Thank you, Charmaine. It's nice to be here. Thank you for having me on. Awesome. You want to tell the audience about yourself and what you're up to? Okay. Well, um, Suzanne Glover, and I've been a model and actress for 35 plus years and a salesperson. And um, I'm in my 60s. So I've also reinvented myself several times. And for you doctors and people in the health field out there, you know, midlife is kind of a hard thing for women to go through sometimes. And I have done that. So um, I've been through the hmm, torture of midlife. So what I'm doing right now is combining a whole lot of things. And that is being an actress on camera, pretty much begging for work through this camera for many years, trying to connect and persuade, plus being a a shark uh, sales. I even sold timeshare. Not proud of that. I was good at it, but I did it. Yes. (laughs) And, um, And I understand what women are going through and have gone through the midlife thing. So what I'm doing now is helping midlife women use video to scale their businesses and influence on camera because most are insecure and really boring when it comes to showing up on camera. Sounds mean, but you know, it's so easy to click away. And when I was doing this, um, for many years, we used to have VHS tapes mm, where I remember we those. audition. Remember those? Oh, yeah. yes. And um, so when I would be in an audition, the decision makers were not there. So it would be recorded on a VHS tape and they would fast forward through because they'd have hundreds of applicants. I was up against mm. hundreds of people for one job and they would fast forward. So you had to catch their attention and you had to keep their attention much like what people are going through today. You have to catch their attention, you have to keep their attention. So I learned ways to do that. And yes, I froze the very first time I talked to the camera when I went from modeling to being an actress, I froze. And I I had to overcome that because it meant my career was gonna be stopping. So actually a lot of the things that I went through as an actress and a salesperson, as a business person, I can relate to what people are going through at this point in life where you've got to pivot to video even if you're not selling on video you show up and even I was just on I'll I'll finish with this I was just on a mastermind before this and I said you know it seems like people aren't taking video seriously and um kind of hurts my feelings (laughs) (laughs) how's I'll just say it like it is hurts my feelings because um I worked really hard for all those years to get really good at being on the camera and people are just clicking on, you know, talking on the camera. And one of the guys were like, are you kidding? When you talk on the camera, I want to listen because you come across really credible and all this good stuff. And I just started crying. It was very embarrassing. Oh, that's (laughs) uh, all the feels, all the feels. 
but it was <laughs> it feels really good to have somebody understand that you how you show up on video is really an important thing absolutely absolutely agreed yeah i think that um a lot of people so okay so now you're talking about something that is hugely, in, there's a lot of fear embedded in what you're talking about. Okay. Because, you know, so everybody who listens to the show knows that my issue and the biggest fear that I face is my fear of public speaking. And, you know, so, but what do I do to, to basically, um, to mitigate that? I speak a lot in public. I do the podcast. I do video, right. On social media, I do all kinds of things to make myself feel more comfortable. The fear doesn't go away, but you feel more comfortable. But the thing is that I remember that very first time when someone challenged me and they said, you know what? You have to start doing Facebook lives. This is a long time ago. This is like maybe four years ago, five years ago. And they said, you have to start doing Facebook lives because that extemporaneous speech is what you need to practice. And the way to practice that is in an environment like that, because what happens is you become very authentic in your approach and your delivery. And so I think that once I did that, speaking on a camera didn't really like bother me anymore because the more you do that is the more comfortable you get, just like getting up in front of an audience and speaking to them you may still have the palpitations. You may still have the sweaty armpits. You may still have the sweaty palms. Like all those things may still be there, but you are going to not speak as rapidly as you did when you were super nervous and fearful before. You're going to start honing your, your skill level. And so I think people have, I mean, it's, there's a reason why the fear of public speaking is like higher than the fear of death. People don't like to do it. <laughs> It, it bothers them. It's not their natural state. And so now you're talking about taking it another level, which is actually getting in front of a camera. So now, you know, the possibility is not that it is the finite amount of people that they can see in front of them, but it's an endless possibility of eyes that are on them now. Exactly. And I think that is the thing that makes people very like nervous about taking that first step. So, you know, it's kind of a big deal, you know, like even if they're coming on and they're doing it and they're doing it messy and they're like just talking into the camera and they're looking down or they're not, they're not making eye contact or whatever it is. It's still a big deal for them to even make that first step. And I think that's the thing that people have the most difficulty with getting it in is. front of the camera and pressing record. It is. And it, what it is, is the fear of public speaking amplified. And that's because this is not a natural environment. It's not. I mean, it's like E.T. coming down at you, you know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, E.T. was like a movie where the lights were coming down. It was very embarrassing or very scary. You're sitting here with all these lights on you and this one-eyed monster looking at you and you can't interact. It's understandable that it happens. But I have to say there's a caveat about practicing. And I, 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 there's, there's a double-edged sword of practicing. One is that, yes, you do it. For example, when I was in a group, I had one particular group where the gal, she didn't even show up on camera. She just said, okay, I'm gonna keep my camera off and listen. All right, I am a very safe, I, I make a safe environment. So if she didn't wanna show up, I'm not gonna force her. As I worked with the other people in the group, all of a sudden there she popped on. Why was that? Because she felt safe because she knew that we were in the group. So she could see on the other side of the camera what was happening. We can't see on the other side of the camera what's happening. Right. Right. After she did that, all of a sudden she's ready to do Facebook Lives. Boom, boom, boom. Right. Oh, okay. that's fantastic. <laughs> just because she got through that safe environment. However, what happens then is, and this is a warning, this is just a warning because I'm seeing the public, after being in the TV and film industry for so many years and teaching for Screen Actors Guild, I saw a lot of seasoned actors and they got a lot of bad teaching and they would get a lot of bad habits. 
or they wouldn't have any teaching at all and they'd have bad habits. So, so yes, you need to overcome the fear of getting on camera, doing it and, and telling yourself you did really good, even though you feel like you did really bad, you did really good. But at the same time, you've got to be careful about how you practice because practice makes perfect. No, practice doesn't necessarily make perfect. Practice makes permanent. Mm -hmm. So if you're practicing right. wrong, like I had a ballet teacher, she said, you're doing your plie all wrong. And I don't want you to do it. Like, I don't want you to do it like that because you're practicing it wrong and you're getting it in your body wrong. So what am I going to do? She said, I want you to start doing it baby steps. And I was an advanced dancer on point. So, um, you know, up on your toes. Yes, absolutely. And she had me redo my plie completely. So my advice is to, yes, overcome, to start playing around with it. Don't have any expectations. Don't have too much fear in your head about, oh my gosh, I did terrible. I'm talking yourself down because that's just going to make it worse. But be careful about how you practice, because if you're doing it wrong, you're going to be making it permanent. And that's, that's where you're going down the wrong road in a bad way. Indeed, 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 definitely. And then so, you know, the thing is that, um, that you mentioned something that was quite important. You mentioned that, you know, your client felt comfortable because she was in a safe environment. So she had a, she had a practice ground, she had a place where she could like be comfortable messing up then. Um, what suggestions do you have for people who maybe are looking for something like that? Okay. First off, do not get into an acting class. Because, you know, I'm an actor and you might think, oh, maybe I should go take a camera class. Don't get in an acting class. That's the first thing I want to say, because a lot of actors are very mean um, because they're not because. Um, so I taught for Academy of Art University, and that was a university that only had working professionals work teaching. A lot of actors teach because they can't act and because they don't get jobs. Oh, OK. Wow. So Oh, wow. And yeah. they can be so mean. And you have okay. to be so careful because this is like a little bud opening up. And particularly when we're talking about fear yes. of this thing, then you have a, a, a person who is hammering you down as a person because they have to feel better about themselves. Now, this is not all the acting. I mean, if, I'm, if there's an acting coach on here, I do not mean to offend you. It's been my experience that there are a lot of them that are very uh, not good at this. So you have to be careful. So what you can do, first thing I always tell people is you can be your own person and say, how'd that feel? How'd that feel? Well, mm -hmm. I mean, honestly, how did that feel? I don't know. Well, did it feel cheesy? Mm -hmm. Did it feel like you were really talking to somebody? Oh yeah, I talked to my best friend. Well, maybe that's not the right person to talk to. Okay, so who do I talk to? All right, what are you talking about? Well, I want, I'm talking about selling my product. How do you wanna feel about that? I wanna feel authoritative. Are you authoritative with your friend? No, not really. So is authoritative going to come out? So you start self-analyzing, okay? And for the therapists and the health people, and they're going to go, oh, I can do this. <laughs> I can do this. You want to self-analyze yourself to a certain extent. And it's all about feeling. Acting is all about feeling. I mean, here I am crying in a mastermind with 70, 70 people on there. And I'm thinking, okay, you know that? That's just the actress coming out in you. <laughs> You're being vulnerable because you've been vulnerable for 35 years in front of this camera. So, so you've got to be able to be vulnerable with yourself, if that makes any kind of sense at all. Before you, get, before you hit record, I'm talking about just having that time and not be recording. I mean... I worked on my smile. I worked on my eye contact. I worked on these things for decades outside of auditions where there were no cameras or lights on. 
And what I would do is I would get a, a glass or a, a magnifying glass and just look into it and train myself to do things that I knew I had to do, but I did it without the camera. So I would, I would suggest, first off, do not get acting lessons. Second off, create a safe environment for yourself to play with it. And third, do get some good training, whether it's me or somebody that really does know what they're talking about. This is a medium that is new to the public. There are rules to it. And even if you're a doctor and you're just having like, um, you know, telemedicine events, it's, it really does lose. Okay, here's the story. I had signed up with a guy with this company because I talked to him over the phone. I signed up. Great guy in person, right? Over the phone. He held an onboarding webinar live. I canceled. He was so arrogant. He came across as arrogant. He wasn't like that mm. on the phone, mm. but he came across as arrogant and he lost me. So he lost my business. Wow. So it's important, no matter where you are in the world now, the world expects to see you on camera. And if, what I'd like your audience to understand is it's a medium that's worth learning. It's a medium that has rules. When I started out, there were gatekeepers and you could not play in it unless you learned how to do it. They would not even let you in. And now the public has to be spokespeople and overcome these fears all of a sudden. And they don't have the right training. I had at least the right training. You guys don't have the right training. So I say, have compassion for yourself. Take it slowly and get some good help. Whether it's me or someone else, just get some help that you're not creating bad habits. That's great. Because it, it, it you are overcoming a huge fear with that. So, you know, that part alone, making a decision to even do it, um, it's good to know that you should have some kind of like plan when you're, you know, getting instruction around it. So that's, that's very helpful. Very and helpful. having a strategy, I'm sorry to interrupt, but having a strategy for video. See, another thing is people do too many videos because they don't have a plan and you have to be very strategic about how you approach video. What are you saying? How are you saying it? Am I doing 10 videos or am I doing a hundred videos? Many people, I had one client, she had done 600 videos in five years without making any money because she bought into the online myth that you have to do video after video after video after, what doesn't care if it converts or not. I had one lesson with her and I didn't even know I told her something. I didn't even, I didn't even realize what she had picked up for me. She applied it the next day and she made a sale. I That's thought, awesome. You, you weren't doing that? It's like... <laughs> No, awesome. I wasn't doing that. I thought, oh my gosh, that's like, really? That's basic. So, so it, it just, I'm saying, take it seriously enough mm. and, um, and work with the medium for a while in a safe place. That sounds good. That's good. Hey, it's Dr. G. And I just wanted to take a quick moment to thank you for listening to this episode. I'm so honored to have you here with me. Did you know that I can help you to get your own podcast started? With my podcasting launch course for professionals, I walk you through everything you need to know about starting a podcast. I'm with you every step of the way from sign up to launching your show with five episodes ready to go. There's a done for you version that's also available. If you would just rather just do recordings and leave the behind the scenes work up to us, then that one is definitely for you. But either way, we've got your back here at Fearless Freedom with Dr. G. Oh, if you already have a show and you need production services, we have monthly plans available for you. So check out the links in the episode show notes for more information. Let's get back to the show.
Yeah. And, and, and it's always, and, and that's why, and that's the, the value of having a coach though, because like, you know, you could be doing the thing. And like you said, you could really be practicing the negative aspect of that craft and not realizing it. And then that is something that you're internalizing. So having a coach is somebody who can like look at the situation from the outside and just give you those tweaks that are going to help you to get the sale. You know, you've done 600 videos, but if you didn't do, I don't know what you told her, but like if she didn't have a call to action, for example, then if she never had a call to action, then she's never going to get a sale. Right. Because it's all nice. That you're, right. She did saying. not have a call to action. So if you have these, if you don't, if you're missing that thing, then you're never, nobody's going to know you're selling something and nobody's going to know what to do next. So, you know, it's a small tweaks that really make a difference when you have someone kind of like looking at what you're doing and then giving you some direction. Okay. It's, may I give another tip on sure. about that? Because when you're selling, I don't want people, I don't want people to think like you can't, you have to have a call to action, right? So now we're getting into the sales thing and we're probably losing some people like docs as well. I don't sell. Or no, they sell. They know they sell. They know sell. they have to sell. <laughs> but you know what? Sales, if you're a teacher, you have to persuade people to do the work. If you're a doctor, you've got to persuade people to take their medicine. You're constantly Absolutely. selling. Yeah, absolutely. And so, so in my era or my world, I help people by learning and saying, I'm helping people by selling them something, but I, cause I'm not really selling, I'm helping people. So if people say, I'm not really talking on camera, I'm helping someone and take it away from themselves and put it out. Like I'm helping. That's a big thing to overcome the fear, man. Get out of your own head and think about the other person. And I know so many people talk about that, but it's really uh, relevant here in this medium. Absolutely. Absolutely. That external focus is huge. Wow. So, so no, that's far, good. We've talked, we've talked yeah, yeah, okay, go ahead. have compassion for yourself. Yes. Play with the camera in off mode. And what was the last thing I just said? External focus. So don't, don't, don't let it be focus. about you. Mm -hmm. See, so there's three things right there. Yeah, no, that's good. That's really good. So, you know, we're always curious on the show about um, your own fears and how you overcome them. So you have had several transitions, as you mentioned, you transitioned from the world of modeling to the world of acting. Um, and then, you know, you've had to do the whole you know, the whole beat where, you know, you're doing all these auditions, et cetera, et cetera. Let us know a story about, about a fear you've had and how you overcame it. Okay. Well, I'll talk about the first time I did talk on camera. Is that all right? It was a while That ago. sounds fantastic. Yeah, that's perfect. Okay. Well, I, I had been a model. People said I looked like Cheryl Teagues back in the eighties. So I became a model, but I'm telling you it, it was a short lived thing because I entered it late. And you get too old for modeling very quickly. So I had to segue into acting. And I thought, hey, you know, I'm great. In, I'm not great, but I'm in person. You know, I can handle things in person. Like most people, I can speak in public. So I didn't think much about it. And um, there I was. I was a kind of a go-getter marketer at the time. Well, I still am. But I mean, I was like 20 years old or something. And I was already in business for myself and I was a marketer. I got my first little commercial, it was a little local spot. And um, it was a little shoot. It wasn't anything even big. So I was supposed to be crouching down by a stream, scooping up some water, standing up and talking to the camera. All right. Scoop up the water, stand up, freeze. <laughs> oh, <laughs> <laughs> wow and um talk about embarrassing the director he just lowered his head and he shook his head like what did i hire and the crews looking at each other and i'm thinking okay i'm failing i'm failing i can't fail i can't fail this is my first thing if i'm going to keep going in my career i've got to be able to do this 
So I dug down deep and I said, you know, whatever comes out, I'm going to use that energy of fear to deliver my next thing because I did that a lot. I had one audition. I'm going to segue here for a minute. I had one audition while I was late, yeah, super late. I was super nervous. And the guy had me cry on cue. Piece of cake because I had all this energy. All the emotion from being late and everything. <laughs> all I felt like saying was, oh, yes, I was late. I'm crying. <laughs> I got that job because he says, you know, nobody could cry. I said, I didn't say anything. I thought, well, I hope I'm right. Yeah, just, just hold that one to your chest. Hold that one close. <laughs> That's right. So the, um, but I used that energy. It was just came natural because over the years, as I was up against the wall, every time I was up against the wall, it's like I had to dig deep, face the fear and find a way. It's like these ideas would drop from the heaven and I go, okay. So I did, I don't remember what I did to use it because there's different ways of using the energy. So I don't remember exactly what I did because it was 35 years ago over, but we went again. I said, okay, let's go and take two. They're all going, wow, wow, this is great. You know, they're all like happy, happy. And that went on to be an award-winning commercial. So I thought- Awesome. Look at that. Yeah, I got that. I can do this, okay? Then, you know, you get into the real world of the thing and it's like, oh no, I can't do this. <laughs> oh goodness. Every stage, every stage that you let you go up, there is a new challenge. <laughs> every time. And, and it, you know, I started not, I started auditioning and not getting work. So I got a mentor or no, I got an agent. Well, they didn't help me much. So I got oh. a mentor. She helped me a lot. Okay. And then I had to start talking for my business in public. And then I had to start talking for my business. So it's like it continually comes up. And those things are like, okay, I'm not good enough to do this. Are you nuts? Of course you're good enough to do this. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. Because in my mind, I'm up against the Meryl Streeps out there because mm -hmm. I've been on camera forever. And I think, okay, well, I'm not good enough to do this. Sure you are. Just do it. So, so every time I come up against a fear, a lot of times I'll journal about it okay sometimes i just avoid it for a while but you know when you're right in the middle of something you can't avoid it right so you just have to dig down inside listen to that little voice I, my big theme is awareness self-awareness when you're talking in front of the camera how does it feel how does this fear feel oh boy that feels bad so how can we shift that and i just start dialoguing with myself the different personalities okay this sounds crazy suzanne but <laughs> <laughs> no no it doesn't <laughs> we know you're an actress <laughs> <laughs> i have all these little people in my bag over here i talk to <laughs> no i um i actually there is a therapy apparently where you have your different parts of yourself talk to each other and I didn't know that when I, I always do these things. And then I find out, oh, there's a whole method or technique around that. <laughs> there is. So I would have my uh, OCD driver talk to my dreamer and I would just yeah. sit back and listen to him. I go, wow, this is really good. <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and they would talk to each other and they so why do you have to drive me so much? And they'd have an argument and I think, ooh, Who's going to win? So at the end of this, there's always yeah. a compromise. And I was, I was paralegal for 40 years. So I, I always let one voice talk. Okay, here's the tip. I let a voice talk instead of suppressing it. Okay. I let a voice talk. So when I was afraid, I say, okay, what are you afraid of? What is it? And I let it talk. I let it talk. I let it talk. I let it talk. Is there anything else? No, I feel heard. Okay. Well, now I'm going to be the attorney. You know what? You're feeling like you're not good enough, but what's the evidence about that? Okay. Mm. Well, what are people saying? Yeah, what are yeah. people saying about you? What are people saying? The evidence proves that you're doing something okay, Suzanne. So why are you going to believe that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, crazy actress again. <laughs> people on this show no, 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 say, that, oh, that works i mean it's actress? it works i mean if it because because it gets you to the to the goal right i mean it, it it doesn't you're not crippled by the voice 
once you let it out there, let it speak, and you're aware of everything, it's no longer powerful, right? Exactly. So you, you have control over it at that point. It, it diffuses it. And I'm sure somebody out there is saying, yeah, that method is called blank, blank, blank. Oh, sure. <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure. Well, in I'm acting, sure. it's getting close to your feelings. <laughs> okay. No, that works. That works totally. So you have to, you have to, um, you have to tell people about your book, right? You have a book, oh, right? My book. Yeah. My book. Yeah, I, about book. I know they probably can't see it. Be a video influencer. And I said earlier before we got on, the top title is Empowered Women Pocketbook on the top. Yeah. And then I'm and wearing my this Empowered Women Empowered Empower Women t-shirt. T-shirt on. <laughs> so anyway, be a video influencer, reinvent your life and your business as a midlife movie star. And I'm giving away free copies to your audience. And I'll tell you how to get that in just a second. I want to explain the midlife movie star and then I'll give you a link. Okay. When you get to be really good on camera, something magical happens. When you're nurtured along the right way and you start feeling really good, you start feeling like a celebrity. It's a weird phenomenon. So Sally was a midlife person. She was in her 50s. She was a dental manager. She hit midlife. She went to bed for two years. Her doctor wow. said, yeah, ate TV yeah. dinners. I could see it though. I could see it happening. Ate TV dinners. Her doctor said she should be dead by her test results. She came to me, said, you know what? If, if she's going to not be good or if she's not going to be alive, she wants to do something. I nurtured her for about six months. And, you know, she ended up going to an acting convention from completely depressed in bed to being an acting convention candidate, winning the comedy competition, second place, awesome. second place, performing in front of hundreds of people. That's and fantastic. her testimonial to me, I'm getting a lot of chills right now. Her testimonial to me was, you know, before I worked with Suzanne, all these bad things were happening after now I feel like I can look people in the eye and feel proud of who I am. I feel like I'm worthwhile. I feel there's just this magical presence that starts happening because you really start feeling like a movie star. So that's why I say reinvent your life as a midlife movie star because I do help midlife women, not physically like a doctor, but emotionally get their way through midlife. So to get my book free, SuzanneGlover.com, S-U, uh, don't go there, S-U-Z-A-N-N-E-G-L-O-V-E-R.com forward slash free book, F-R-E-E-B-O-O-K. If you go to the website, you have to pay for it. If you go to that link, SuzanneGlover.com free book, forward slash free book, you get it for free. Awesome. Well, thank oh, you for doing that. Oh, and the guys. That. And the guys, okay, yes. don't check out on me, guys. Well, it the is guys who want to get it for their ladies. And they can understand what their women are going through. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I do talk about my seven-step formula for being influential on camera in the book. So men do get out, men do get something out of it, even if they don't have a female going nuts in menopause. No, that's fantastic. Well, my my uh my menopause is coming soon, so <laughs> I can relate. Oh. I've been through it. I just about killed myself. It was awful. I mean, it's just like, oh, everybody's situation is so different when it comes to that. Like, I, you, I don't even know what to expect, but you know, I'm just like, whatever, whatever, whatever it brings, I will just accept it because it's another stage, another phase. <laughs> it is. And I was in total denial, but you know, I had an elderly mother and I was, I was heavily bleeding. I finally had a hysterectomy a couple of years okay. ago. I mean, I was literally hemorrhaging blood um every yeah. like for three well for four months it finally got it wouldn't stop my doctor said i'm surprised you didn't have a heart attack i'm thinking really yeah well hopefully so, not a heart attack i mean you might have gotten very anemic ah but that's was, just a lifelong thing anemia oh geez okay All right. no but i know what i know now it's but i'm MTA glad that you got it rectified <laughs> No, no, no. Yeah. It's the MT, it's the methylene tetrahydrofolate redactase thing. I'm uh I'm on that now. Okay, gotcha. Finally. All right. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Okay. Awesome. 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 All right. So we are at that part of the show where we do fill in the blanks. Are you ready? I am ready. 
Awesome. 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 All right. So the first one is if I am fearless, I will live life without caring what anyone else thinks and it be independently courageous. Love it. Love it. To me, fearless freedom means fearless freedom. <laughs> this is going to be embarrassing. Okay. This is not G rated, guys. I'm building an infinity pool at my new home. I promised myself I'd have a good pool. I've had friends that are just moving in because I'm in my 60s. So I have friends retiring and moving into these retirement homes. And I said, you know what? I can skinny dip in my infinity pool at three o'clock in the morning. And That's I don't right. care. I don't care. That's <laughs> right. if, I were, and if I were at a community place like that, I would still be, I would still. So ask me the question again. To me, fearless freedom means skinny dipping in a public pool at three o'clock in the morning. <laughs> oh, look at that. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. That's so fun. If I were I in the retirement, I think that's the most be... fun answer in the history of the show. I feel like that's the most fun answer we've had so far. <laughs> I get a gold star. <laughs> There well, because go. I'm just thinking about this. I'm thinking, well, maybe instead of 10 acres with an infinity pool and all this responsibility, maybe I should just, you know, shrink and go and be an old person. I'm thinking, no, you can't no. see me at three o'clock in the morning. No. So I would do that. If I, that's fearless fury, I would, I would sneak down there and skinny dip at three o'clock in the morning. There you go. There you go. That's it. <laughs> all right. And then last but not least, my battle cry is. Just do it. It's not original. Just do it. Have a heart with, for yourself. Have compassion for yourself and just do it. Get through it. Pray it through. <laughs> I hope that you live through it. <laughs> so my battle cry is pray it out. and Just do it. <laughs> That's awesome. That is awesome. Thank you so much for taking time out of your busy day to spend time with us and to share your light with the audience. I think that, you know, there are going to be so many pearls that are taken from this episode. And I am sure lots of people are going to go and claim the book because who doesn't want to be great on video? Like everybody does, right? I mean, that's the thing, right? That's the thing that we have the most difficulty with uh, right next to getting in front of other people and speaking. Right? So, Which is a double uh, thing here. Right. Know? So you're hitting, you're hitting other like people two, hitting but two these people are invisible. <laughs> you're speaking in front of people, but they're invisible. So they're, they're probably backstabbing her. Who knows what they're doing? You know? <laughs> yes. Truth, truth, truth. Yes. But she's doing it. So that's the most important thing. Yes. No. Awesome. Thank you so much. And then just, restate where they can get the book once more, please, so that they can have that. Suzanne Glover, Suzanne with a Z as in Z, SuzanneGlover.com forward slash free book, F-R-E-E-B-O-O-K. Perfect. 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 Awesome. Thank you, Charmaine. You're very welcome. Thank you for joining me on this episode of Fearless Freedom with Dr. G. Again, I'm Dr. G. And if you like this episode, be sure to subscribe so that you can get notified of when the next episode is going to be. And also, I'll catch you next time. Have a great one. Be strong, be brave, and unleash your greatness.